Hi, this is Craig Beals with Project Dragonfly. We're going to take a look at the chi-squared test today and help you maybe understand how you might use this to analyze your data and any number of things you might do on your Dragonfly journey through Miami, uh, but especially in your um, inquiry action project or possibly your inquiries in the field. So first of all, what is the chi-squared test? It's a way to compare if the variation in the data is due to random chance or if it's due to one of the variables you are testing or one of the variables that you are um, just observing. So the equation is down there at the bottom. For some of you it may look familiar, for some of you it may not. And let's go through the equation and sort of dissect the parts and pieces. And then I'll give you lots of examples. Well, I'll give you two key examples in how to use the chi-squared test and show you when it's going to be important. Again, chi-squared is right here. The, um, that's chi and it's squared. The sigma here is the summation symbol and then the O is our observed frequency. Um, I'll, you'll also hear me call it observed outcome. The E is our expected outcome or our expected frequency and then really that's all we need to know to be able to use our equation. So let's take a look at how we put this into action. If we were going to do something like um, maybe start off with something simple that only has two possibilities, we could use an example with two pennies. So let's say we were going to take 100 pennies and flip those pennies up into the air. So we're going to start with 100 of these pennies and we would expect that 50 of those pennies would land heads up and 50 of them would land tails up. So that's going to be our expected frequency. If we flip the pennies and then we observe that 60 of them land heads up and 40 of them land tails up, this is what we're going to use for our observed frequency or our observed outcome. And what we're trying to do with the chi-squared test then is to determine whether there is a significant difference between our observed and expected outcomes. Or, in other words, was our observed outcome not significantly different from what we would have expected to get, which was this right here, 50 and 50. This leads to our null hypothesis. So this is a term that hopefully you have heard um, if you've taken some biology courses. But let's look at that a little more clearly here on the next slide. Our null hypothesis for this will be that there is no significant difference between our observed outcome and our expected outcome. So now what we're going to try to do is either um, reject our null hypothesis up here at the top or accept our null hypothesis. In other words, um, well, st statisticians never like to say accept. They say fail to reject. So um, I'll try to use that one to stay correct. But we're going to need this chart up here to be able to make the whole thing work. So you got to have the chart when you're doing your chi-squared test. Let's look through the table here and figure out what each of the parts and pieces are. Um, right here, the degrees of freedom. This part is important because the degrees of freedom tells us which number we use in this row. So the number of possible outcomes, minus 1. In our example, our, we had two possible outcomes, either heads or tails. To figure out our degrees of freedom, we take minus 1, that which means our degrees of freedom is minus 1. We're going to use that row when we go back to the table. If we look at the p-value down here for probability, um, this is where you hear that confidence. So are we 95% confidence uh, confident in our results of our test or 99.9 or whatever that may be? So if you want to be sure that you're, let's say, 99.999% sure that your observed outcome is st statistically significant compared to your expected outcome, you would go to the far end of the table over here. You see where it says, 0.001. That means, because if we take 100, I'll try to write it out real small here, 100% minus 
0.001, we're going to get 99.999. So that gives us 99.999% confidence. In most of biology, and in most cases, uh, we go with a 95%. So 95% confidence is this 0 0.05 number, because if you take 100 minus 95, you're going to get that 0 0.05. So for our example of the pennies, we're going to focus on a p-value of 0 0.05, which means we're going to use that entire column going up towards the top. Okay, now one more thing we need to look at in the middle here are the critical values. The critical values are the body of this whole thing right in here. So for our example, we're going to use critical value here down the row 1 and up in the column 0 0.05, which means our critical value that we're interested in is 3.84. So I'm going to write this here, 3.84. That's a number that we need to remember because it's going to be important when we go to our analysis and decide if we either need to reject our null hypothesis or fail to reject our null hypothesis. So let's see what we get on the next screen. So I've set this up to build our, a bit of a table. Our expected was 50 and was 50 over here. When we ran the test, we got 60 and 40. So now we plug everything into the equation. Our, our observed is 60 minus 50 squared divided by 50. And over here we've got 40 minus 50 squared divided by our expected, which in this case is 50. So if we take 60 over here, 60 minus 50, we get 10. 10 squared is going to give us 100 over 50. We do the same thing over here. We have 40 minus 50 is going to give us negative 10. Negative 10 squared is 100. Remember, we won't have a negative value there. And then we divide that by 50. Now, we have to sum those together. So now we've got, well, let's simplify. We've got 100 divided by 50. That should give us 2. Over here we have 100 divided by 50, so I'm doing both of these. That gives us 2. We add those two together, and we get 4, which means our chi-squared value is 4. So the important thing then is for us to remember, if we're going to use a 95% confidence, we need to go back to our chart. And if we go back here, we said that we were interested in 3.84, this number right here with a 95% confidence interval. So if our chi-squared ex exceeds 3.84, we reject our null hypothesis. If our chi-squared fails to exceed 3.84, then we fail to reject our null hypothesis. And we had a chi-squared value of 4, which is greater than 3.84. So our null hypothesis says that there is no significant difference between our observed outcome and our expected outcome, and we reject that null hypothesis, which means there is, in our case, a significant difference between the two. What happens if we have a test with more than two outcomes? So our last one, simplified, you've either got heads or you've got tails. Um, we can still, of course, use the chi-squared test. And in this example, we're going to look at maybe if you are a duck farmer, or maybe you have ducks at a petting zoo, and you're trying to find out which feed they prefer more than the other. So I've got A, B, C, D, and E. Those are the different types of feed down there at the bottom. And then we set the ducks loose. And what we would expect to see is that if we have 20 ducks and there are five options of food and those food have no difference between them, we would think, think that it's easiest for the ducks to just 
go to the five different options and eat from each of those. Now, if the feed is going to be different, then we want to look and see, well, um, if there is a difference, is that difference significant to warrant the fact that, okay, we can say that maybe food D is more preferred by the ducks. So in order to do that, we must observe our ducks again after we've changed our food from uh, to the different types. And we see when the ducks start to come out to feed that it appears that our ducks really quite enjoy food D. Now, when we go to recommend to our boss that we need to buy more food B because our ducks really seem to prefer that and our ducks have been a little famished because they have not been eating well for some reason, um, our boss is maybe going to say something to the effect of, well, are you positive? Can you be sure that B is actually a good choice? Or did the ducks just randomly end up in that spot? In order to be able to answer that question, you could run the chi-square test and let them know with 95% confidence or even 99.99 or anyone you choose um, on your recommendation. So if we go back to what we did before, we need to look at first our um, degrees of freedom. So we had options A, B, C, D, and E. That means we had five options. To get this, we take N minus 1, which means we've got four degrees of freedom. We're going to use this row right here. Our p-value, if we stick with what we had before, 95%. 95%, we use a p-value of 0 0.05 because 100 minus 95 is 0 0.05. And then our critical value then, if we follow these two up, is going to be 9.49. So we're going to need to figure out if our chi-squared number exceeds that or if it does not, if it fails to exceed that. So if our chi-squared exceeds that critical value, we will reject our null hypothesis. Um, if it does not exceed the critical value, we will fail to reject our null hypothesis. Again, our null hypothesis is that there is no significant difference between the two. So I've already filled this out for us. Our expected was four all the way down the board. And what we actually saw was one duck went to A, 10 to B, four to C, three to D, and two went over to E. Now we got to run the chi-squared test again up here. And um, we'll see those pop up on the screen and I'll write it out but I'll, I'll save you the boredom and it'll just kind of skip over and show you all the numbers up on the screen and here's what we get. So I've made a bit of a mess here but you can see we're summing all of them together down on the bottom. When I add them up I get the following. So my chi squared is 10.5. Now remember our critical value was 9.49 with four degrees of freedom and a 95% confidence, and if this is 10.5, if this number exceeds the critical value, then we reject our null hypothesis. And our null hypothesis stated that there was no significant difference between them, which means there is a significant difference in the simplified case between the um, expected outcome of food, and then when we actually set different types of food out for the ducks, um, they absolutely must have preferred one or some of them over another. Now, one thing you could do in the next step for this would be to start to eliminate the different types of feed, and of course find out if they continued to enjoy food B better. Another really good, um, important thing to do would be in your methods to replicate this experiment many, 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 many times um, to see if it's indeed random that they're going to be. So doing this in one, um, in one turn or in one chance is not best practice, but it does sort of outline the principles of the chi-squared test. So good luck. Good luck uh, as you work your way through all of your fine work with Project Dragonfly, and take care.